All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Cargantua system mod, which is being made by forum user Artyomka15. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a kerbalized version of the Gargantua system from the movie Interstellar, which is pretty sweet as, I mean, come on, who doesn't want to go and visit a star system that's orbiting a giant freaking supermassive black hole. It's just terrifyingly awesome. So let's jump right into the tracking station and have a look at what this planet pack does add in. Though I should mention right off the bat, as you've probably noticed, that uh, Kerbin looks a lot nicer than usual, and that's because this mod does come pre-packaged with both the Scatterer mod as well as the Eve mod. So there are a lot of visual enhancements for these planets that are getting added in, which is pretty nice. I mean, they are probably some of the most beautiful beautiful looking planets I've seen in a planet pack for some time and you know it's nice that of course those mods do uh, enhance what we already have in the Kerbal system which is quite fun but let's tab through our current system before we make it to Elo to pause here for the drama of the first well I, I was about to call it a planet but no it's it's not a planet at all it is a supermassive black hole! There we are, the Cargantua black hole, which everything in this system orbits around. And it is pretty freaking sweet! We got the just giant black hole in the center there, our large accretion disk spinning around, which sadly, as you can see as we zoom out, it gets a bit distorted, but I can kind of live with that, as that's one of the cooler effects that I've seen from a Copernicus planet pack. I mean, you don't usually see things like that. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen something like that from a Copernicus planet pack. It is pretty awesome to have this spinning accretion disk. And not only that, we do of course have, as you can see here, a variety of planets around it. And even though we are in our own unique place, we're still fairly close, as you can see over there, to the uh, standard in-game solar system. Uh, personally, I wish we were a bit further away, seeing as how this is supposed to be another star system. But you know what? I mean, eh, it's still going to be pretty difficult to get to this place, so I can live with it. But overall, very, very cool supermassive black hole. Now, uh, to give you a bit of stats on it, it is supposed to be 80,000 kilometers in radius with a gravity of 100 Gs. So perhaps not the most impressive black hole ever in the universe, but certainly the most impressive one I've seen in Kerbal Space Program. Well, in fact, I think it's the only one I've ever seen in Kerbal Space Program, so, well, actually no, I think maybe we've seen one or two in the past. Hmm, I'd have to think on that, but still a fun thing nonetheless. Just uh, don't get too close to it. Now, the first planet we have is a lemur or a limer, not entirely sure how to pronounce that one, which orbits just uh, terrifyingly close to a black hole and is a mostly ocean planet, except for this volcano hidden under the clouds there, which is just gorgeous looking. Again, thanks to Scatter and Eve, this is a pretty impressive looking planet. I honestly ha would uh, be comfortable saying this is probably one of the, my favorite planets I've seen in a very, very long time. Now, it's got a pretty decent gravity to it of 1.4 Gs, a radius of 480 kilometers. And again, like I said, mostly ocean, 90% ocean, except for right here where you'd have a safe landing spot for any landers and rovers, etc. Where then, uh, uh, yeah, you'd be prepared perpetually staring into that black hole over there, which, I mean, hey, <laughs> whatever floats your boat. And I just love the just giant storm that is just always here on this planet. It is pretty darn cool. Now, the next planet that we do have uh, is actually... Nam, or Nam, again, not entirely sure how to say it, and it is an icy planet without an oxygen atmosphere. It does have an atmosphere, as you can tell from the cloud layers, etc., and of course the uh, 
information down here that says, yes, atmospheric, but not oxygen atmospheric. Surprising, though, considering the fact that it's covered in pine trees. So, you know, uh, you, you at least get a good visual before you suffocate. Uh, overall, though, radius of 339 kilometers and 0.62 on the Gs. Very, very nice planet. I do love the variation in terrain. Kind of hard to see through the thick cloud layer. But it's just got all these beautiful looking valleys, etc. And kind of a greenish, a light green to purple environment. Very, very cool overall. And of course, still facing the terrifying supermassive black hole, which is particularly glitchy here, which I think is because the accretion disk is that thin line you are occasionally seeing there. We're basically staring dead onto it. So I think that might be what's causing that uh, immense glitchiness over there at the moment. Now, the next next thing we have is uh, not a planet. It's Pentagruel, which <laughs> you can see very strange things orbiting around it and spinning, and that's because rather than a planet, this is supposed to be a rapidly spinning pulsar, and at this zoom level, it looks weird. But if we do actually zoom out to a more proper area, or proper zoom rather, there we go. It actually looks like a more realistic pulsar rather than just those two weird things spinning around. I find this one a little strange because if you do zoom in, it is just this very tiny white orb with weird other white orbs spinning around it real quickly, but when you are zoomed out, it does look a lot more interesting. Uh, now this one, a lot less Gs than the supermassive black hole at only 35.8 gravities, uh, and a radius of 30 kilometers, so a very tiny little thing. And the last celestial body that we do have is Admum, the planet orbiting this little pulsar there, and it is a desert planet with an oxygen atmosphere, and it is a pretty gorgeous looking thing. As you can see, it does have a pretty thin atmosphere, and uh, gravity is also quite uh, low at 0.125, uh, partially due to the 280 kilometer radius, so it is a smaller planet for this system, but I do just love the look of this thing. It's pockmarked with all these beautiful craters, a very smooth and shiny looking planet, and and I do love the coloration between the browns and the greens, etc. A very, very lovely looking thing. And uh, yeah, that is everything that is a part of the Cargantua system, as if we do tab once more, well, we're back to the sun. And so, let us actually take a look a bit more closely at one of the planets here. Of course, like I said, my favorite one. Oh, it's just such a beautiful place. I do have a ship orbiting overhead so we can get a good look at things, and hopefully get a gorgeous view slightly glitchy view actually I don't think that that should be quite as bright over there let's adjust our orbit though yeah it looks like uh, perhaps scatter or Eve is slightly glitching out now that we're actually in the world the problem with using visual enhancements sometimes they go a bit wonky but uh, let's actually change our orbit here we'll use graphical and just uh, sort of spin ourselves around over to the weird side <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And just take a look at this. We have the, a lovely ship here gazing into the heart of a supermassive black hole. Just the thing our pilot Jebediah should be staring at. He's already crazy enough. He probably really shouldn't be staring into that thing. But a beautiful view of that accretion disk spinning around. Very awesome. I do love the look of this thing. And especially when you do land on this planet onto the uh, volcano that, again, is the only land on the planet. Uh, you do get a gorgeous view of this black hole from there which does make it, I, I think is why I do love this planet. Not only is it a beautiful one when uh, Scatter and Eve aren't slightly glitching, but you do have a gorgeous view up in the sky. If it was a real world, it would also be a very terrifying view staring at a black hole, but overall, I find it very, very fun. Uh, but yeah, that really is it to this planet pack. Not a hugely long video, of course, because, well, it is a planet pack. Uh, not a whole lot to go over, but we do have this beautiful accretion disk in black hole. So if you would like to check out this mod for yourself, and I would definitely say to go and give it a try, you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual. And yes, definitely go check it out, have fun exploring these planets, and try not to get yourself sucked into that black hole. But that is going to be it for today, folks. I hope you all have enjoyed, and...
And of course, that you do come back for the next one. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one. It actually looks like that uh, glitch has gone away. It's not quite as overly bright on that side of the planet now. Wonderful. Ah, uh, the world of modding. Later, folks.